Why are you here? That's the question we're discussing evening by evening on this program. And you remember that we've reached the point where we said that it was no use looking to the ordinary prophets and religious leaders for explanations to this cosmic question. There was no point in looking to them, nor is there any point in looking to other human philosophers, because they all share the same limitation. They have never been off the earth. They have never been outside in the cosmos. They have never been beyond what we can see with our greatest radio telescopes. Indeed, there is only one man who has ever been able to leave the earth at will and come back to live here more than a month and then tell us that he was going back to see his father who had made the earth and proven to scholars, historians, to lawyers, to literary critics alike that in fact he did do that and that is the man Jesus of Nazareth. And you know how we have discussed the reasons we have for believing that he in fact did rise from the dead and break the death barrier. And so now we're listening to his explanations of why we were put on this earth and why we exist. And you remember we have been sharing how all of us have the same experience in regard to the whole question of security. That is, we never seem able to get sufficient security. And of course, Jesus said that. He said, whatever is born of the flesh is flesh. And you're born of the flesh. All you have is created life. And you feel all the time that you are made for some kind of uncreated life that has a security and a stability in it that is beyond what this present world seems capable of giving you. But somehow you can never experience it with just the elements of created life that you possess. And he said, it doesn't matter how you try, you will never do it. But of course, you won't believe that. And of course, we don't believe that. That's why you know you are trying to build up your bank balance as high as you can. That's why you are trying to get a better insurance policy. That's why you are hoping that the government will supply a better social security system because you believe that somehow you ought to have stability and security from the economic instability and insecurity that is present in this world. Indeed, you believe further that you should have a security and a stability in regard to your physical health. But somehow that seems finally impossible when we pass through the final experience. And yet we keep on trying. And you know how many of us have absolutely dedicated our whole existence and whatever abilities we have to establishing security. Indeed, we scramble and scrabble in order to get enough shekels together to give us a nearly retirement and the kind of safety that we think we were made for. Uh, what Jesus has told us is, of course, that we can never get enough safety to satisfy us. Our appetite for security and stability is so great, is so tremendous, and is so supernatural that the money that we gather on this present earth or the circumstances that we manage to create for ourselves in retirement will never supply us with enough security to save us from that terrible feeling of angst that we feel at times when we waken up in the night in a cold sweat. He said we'll never get it because that desire for security and stability is a desire for what we were made for. And we were made for the realization that somebody else that is bigger than our dads, bigger than our moms, bigger than our husbands, bigger than our wives, bigger than our presidents or our prime ministers, someone that is bigger than anybody on this earth, is actually aware that we're here. And the reason he put us here was so that we would begin to depend on him day by day and not try to substitute the things that we can get and gather around us for his own love and care. And that's what Jesus said. 
He said, what you're doing is you're trying to substitute things for love. That's it. You're trying to get security from things instead of from love, and you'll never do it. And actually, we know that ourselves. We all joke about the uh, woman who has received her fifth uh, uh, $500,000 or 200,000 pound diamond and uh, she says dramatically things, things, things don't you care about me myself and of course we know that in fact love is deeper than giving people things and that Jesus said is our problem we're trying to get security and stability from things that we gather around us when the only thing that will give us real security and stability is love. Indeed, it's not security and stability we need, he said, it's love. Security and stability is just an attribute of love. But you can attempt to get security and stability from things and still not get love, and so you don't feel you have security. But if you get love, even if you don't have the things in front of you, you have the security. And actually, we know that ourselves. We know it from when we were little children. You did not know the state of your dad's bank account. You did not know how much money he made week to week. In fact, when you look back today, you wonder how he managed it all. And yet you know the tremendous sense of stability and security that you had because there was somebody over you and above you who knew it seemed infinitely more than you did and who cared for you and was concerned about you. And that's what gave you stability. Same deal with your maker. That's exactly what he wants you to begin to feel. In fact, he gave you your father as just a shadow and a poor example of what he himself is. Your own father is the one who made you. He is the great father who though he's all our father, yet he's yours particularly because he knows you, you're special to him. And he, through his son, said this, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor about your body what you shall put on. Is not life more than food? And we know it is. It certainly is far more than food. And the body more than clothing? Yeah, when we had... Poor clothes. Still, it was more important to be alive. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. And that's right, they don't. You never see a bird gathering in a barn or sowing or reaping. And yet your Heavenly Father feeds them. And we know that. We know that. It's incredible. We don't know how it works. But there's a whole system there that operates. And actually, we do know that it has worked with us too. Because at times when we haven't been able to sow or reap, or we haven't been able to gather into barns, somehow or other the meal has been on the table. Somehow or other provision has been made. And gradually, if we reflect upon it, we begin to realize that this father may use a paycheck as the method. He may use a salary as the method. He may use wages as the method. He may use a foreman or a boss or the owner of a company. But at other times... He may use some other method that we can't even explain. But it is him that is doing it. And that's why he said through his son, Which of you, by being anxious, can add one cubit to a span of life? And that's right. doesn't matter how much we worry. We can't add a year to our lives. We can't add an inch to our stature. And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, and they don't. You've never seen a flower toiling or spinning. And yet, really, its dress is beyond anything that Christian Dior can produce or anything that the great couturiers in Europe can produce. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O men of little faith? That's what Jesus said. He said, stop looking to things for your security. Start looking to your Father for it, because he will give it to you without fail as he has done over the years of your life right up to this present day.